Uh, perfect. Deidre, thanks so much for joining in. Cassandra, Luis, I, I appreciate you guys. James Harris, uh, Sandra, um, Mariah, uh, Lupe, and uh, my friend Tina. It is so good to see you guys. Um, I think we're in for a treat. Um, Chelsea and I, like probably many of you, go, go way back. And I don't know how long we've known each other, but it's, it's been a long time. And uh, I'm, I'm honored to have you and just anxious to hear whatever you have to share with us. So without further ado, Chelsea, uh, the floor is yours. Why don't you take yourself off mute? You're good. Um, I, I'm gonna be honest with you, Ben. Um, you told everybody on your Facebook post that I was a cat enthusiast. And really? I, didn't even, I didn't even plan this this morning. Um, oh. You know, um, this is Schrodinger's cat. If anybody knows who, sh who the hell Schrodinger is, let me know. Um, because I'm looking at a lot of numbers and a lot of stuff. And uh, I just thought you were going to get on here and have me like prepped to tell everybody how to be, you know, more loving towards cats because everybody hates them. So that's not what this Zoom is. No, not at all. I don't hate cats at all. I don't, I'm allergic. My entire family were allergic. God bless it. But I know, right? Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this is a cool opportunity. Um, I'm, I'm going to be uh, honest with you. I went back and looked at a couple of other speakers that you've had speak on your, your rise and grind here. Love the name, by the way. I think that's really epic. Uh, it's really awesome. Um, I am not a morning person. I don't know if anyone on this call is. Um, I get a lot done in the middle of the day and the afternoon. There's like a sweet spot of four hours. That's my gold from like 10 to two. Um, I find that I am the most productive. Um, so those of you that are good at getting up in the morning and being on this, this is awesome. Way to go, you guys. I might just like pop in from time to time if I have a Tuesday available. You so you should. So uh, humbly, thank you for reaching out and having me do this. Um, you know, I didn't really know what you would want me to talk about. I knew I would be talking to a lot of realtors. And the reality is, is most people on here, they they know me as Cutco Chelsea or the the sharpest girl in town and the reality is, is i've built a family in the world of kw and in the in the world of real estate um actually representing and selling cutco knives um so today i didn't really want to talk about that um more than anything i just wanted to kind of share with you guys uh, my beginning uh, where i'm from a little bit of what makes me me so you know a little bit more about me personally if you see me at the next event around town or not um, I'll give you my contact info at the end. If you have any questions, you can reach out, but, um, a little bit more about what makes me tick and where I'm from and what makes me get up and grind. Cause I assume that's what people want to hear. So, um, I will go ahead and start with this. I am born and raised Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I was not always the sharpest girl in town. I was not always selling Cutco, believe it or not. I did not wake up one day and go, wow, I'm going to make a 14-year career out of selling these little butter spreaders to realtors. I never, ever woke up and thought that that was going to be the case. I never um, went to college and thought that using the degree that I had was going to be to build a, multi, a multifaceted business that not only helps real estate agents, helps regular consumers. I teach. I do a lot of consulting, um, a lot of coaching. I do a lot of traveling. You know, I was just in Germany for three months last month selling Cutco, uh, representing corporate and representing our brand. And I pinch myself sometimes, Ben, because I'm like, how the heck did I get here? And I'm like on this roller coaster, right? Like, have you ever been on like the merry-go-round? And like, I kind of want to get off, but I kind of don't because it, it was really fun the first time around. And um, I want to see what's to come. So for those of you that don't know me, I'm from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I went to the University of Alabama. You had Josh Deshong on this call uh, weeks ago or a while ago or something. And I had no idea he was such a big Alabama fan. So I need to get his digits because we need to top recruiting classes. Um, I have some opinions about that um, for sure. I've been in Saban's house. Um, kind of want to call him. Um, but I need to talk to Josh. So get me in touch with him, please. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. You know, I. I'll just go ahead and tell you guys just a little vulnerability here, a little authenticity. There's probably a lot of you in real estate that never thought you were going to be a realtor. Maybe you did something else before real estate. Well, I never thought that I was going to be a knife ninja. I never thought that was going to happen. But I got a phone call at 19 years old, living in my parents' house, 
my mom had thrown multiple mailers away from Cutco that they were recruiting college students. Most of you probably know that college students sell Cutco. They'll call you, say, hey, can I practice? Can I come over to your house? This, that, and the other. And my mom threw them away because she thought that it was a scam. Like she thought that it was a scam. She's like, there's no way you're going to make money doing that. Like there's no way. So I was the girl that grew up in a double wide trailer in Alabama. You didn't know that, did you, Ben? Um, and, and, and I don't speak negatively of it. I just want to be real vulnerable here and give you guys a piece of me today uh, about what makes me get up and go every day. Um, I shared a bedroom with my identical twin sister until we were 18 years old. Um, until we were 13, we shared a full-size bed. Um, we had our own twin beds, pretty much all of high school. Um, you know, we had a roof over our head. We had everything we needed. Um, we had parents that loved each other. We had food on the table. Um, we had running water. I mean, we had everything we needed, but I do remember coming home from school sometimes in the middle of the summers and being like, there's hardly any food. Like what the heck is going on? Like, what is, what is happening? And I would watch my friends come to school with fruit roll-ups and these expensive snacks. And I would be there with a, a soggy peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And I would think to myself that that thief of comparison would come in and I'd be like, why is that not me? Why do I not have those things? You know, I grew up with two loving parents that are the hardest workers I know. My mom's been a nurse for 30 plus years. My dad was a Marine, is a Marine still, but he got out of the Marine Corps in the eighties and went into factory work and blue collar working. And what I'm grateful for Ben is that my parents taught me what it means to love people. And they taught me what it means to work hard. And I'll give you guys a piece of my dad and I won't get emotional thinking about it, I think, but I just, I had a tough time with my dad growing up. My dad was mean. He was just hard. He was cold. And if you didn't make your bed, you came home from high school and your sheets were ripped off your bed. The mattress was turned up sideways and it looked like a tornado had hit your bedroom. Now, if any of you are familiar with military, maybe maybe that wasn't the case in, in a military household if you were in, but my dad was tough. Like he was so hard on us and he was so strict. Even in college, even after I started selling Cutco, my dad said, this is not a holiday in. And I had a 9 p.m. curfew on weeknights, like 9 p.m. What the heck? Like, are you kidding me? Study groups don't even start till that time. Like, dad, I got to make the grades so I can keep the scholarship so I can pay for school. Like, come on. But, you know, I look back at all of it and I'm, I'm proud of my dad for instilling a couple of specific values that have taught me to continue to love people and work hard. And the thing that I keep coming back to, Ben, um, the thing I keep coming back to is, is to do your best. That's it. Now, it, it sounds really simple. It's not complicated. Um, you know, I did pageants. I grew up doing pageants because anything to pay for college, you know, I'll parade across a stage in a dress I can't breathe in to win some scholarship money. I would do anything to pay my way through college. I was working three jobs and going to school when I found Cutco um, or when Cutco found me. Um, I just remember my dad saying, I don't need you kids to be the best softball player. I don't need you to be the best football player. I don't need you to be the dancer, the best dancer. I don't need you to be the best head cheerleader, which my sister was a head cheerleader. I have an identical twin sister and I was a head dance team member. My brother was a center. He was best friends with the quarterback. Um, you know, we didn't come from a lot of money, but we just came from good stock and we came from good teaching and good ethics. And my dad, what was funny that I never forgot. Now I'm, I'm 33. When I moved to Dallas about nine years ago, I was like mid twenties when all of you started meeting me. Um, I'd been with Cutco for years at that point because I started when I was 19. Um, you know, dad never demanded that we be the best. He demanded we be our best. And it started with making our bed every day. It started with no matter what, you brush your teeth twice a day. No matter what, you respect your mom. No matter what, you come in here and say goodnight before you go to bed. You know, I look at the generation today, like a lot of my peers, Ben, I look at a lot of my peers. I look at a lot of the, the, the kids that are younger than me and I'll see them hang up the phone on their parents. Bye, mom. And I just do everything that I can to like, instill some type of uh, influence on those kids and people that are my peers and say, hey, call her back, call her back, tell people you love them, do better, like do better than that. 
And I think, Ben, for me, when I really think about my business and what I've created with Cutco, I was not successful out of the gate. I'll put this into perspective for all of you. My first week on the job, I did 28 appointments around 18 hours of school and I sold $6,000 worth of Cutco. That's not a lot, <laughs> like for 28 appointments. Like it's not a lot at all. I was just a workhorse. I saw an opportunity and I said, I'm gonna do everything I can. I'm gonna pound the phone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna chase what I see happening in other people's lives. I'm gonna go after the success because if that guy can do it with all of the things he has that help him, and I'm starting over here at the bottom and I got to work my way up. I know I can do this. Like, I know I can. And I, I look at a lot of real estate agents. And the reality is, guys, is I sell knives, not just to realtors. I sell to businesses. I sell to, hell, I had a dentist engrave some knives once. That was gnarly. I thought it was kind of cool that he was engraving knives. I'm like, you're not going to use these on your patients, are you? Like, <laughs> that'd be great. Um, you know, business is business. Like, it doesn't matter if you're selling butter spreaders or you're selling property, or you're investing in a property, or you're selling ice cubes to an Eskimo. I just, I feel like everyone should just do your best. And you should quit comparing yourself to other people. Um, I kind of narrowed this down, um, Ben, into like five keys for success. I don't know how people show up and do these calls exactly. I'm just going to kind of do, I'm going to, I'm going to flow. Is it okay and if be I flow? Authentic. Chelsea, that's all. I, you know, I just ask that people be authentic, uh, you know, bring you. And so do you, cool. baby, do you. Cool. Cool. Um, you know, it, it's the whole, like, do your best thing. I'm going to tell you guys the skills for life that I have learned from being with Cutco for almost 14 years. My anniversary will be February 2nd, 2023. Um, that'll be 14 years. I've been selling knives and changing lives. And my gosh, I love it. I, I absolutely love what I do. Um, I've learned to forget the past. And I don't mean that in a negative way about how I grew up. I am so proud of how I grew up. I was floating in my mother's pool in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. She just put in an above ground pool on their double wide trailer. And she's so proud of it. And I was drinking Dos Equis, which my dad being as Southern as he is, he doesn't call them Dos Equis. He calls them Does Equis is. Yeah, let that sink in. Yeah, yeah. My dad's a redneck. It's crazy. Um, I'm classy, redneck-ish. Um, anyway, forget the past. It doesn't mean that I'm not proud of where I came from or how I grew up or the, the little money that we had. We had so much. But if I was to stay there, if I was to stay in that box, of whatever was holding me back, doing what all of my friends from high school, all of my friends from college were doing and never having the courage to take a leap of faith and move to Dallas, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. Moving to Dallas from Memphis, Tennessee, I did a three-year stint in Memphis. That was the scariest, but most exhilarating and exciting adrenaline day of my life. Driving that U-Haul and seeing Dallas, the Dallas skyline for the first day, I just, I was so excited. So if there's something holding you back, I would just recommend you forget the past. Number two, success isn't always pretty. Boy, do I have some scars and I'm not talking about the, the scars I've gotten from a Cutco knife here or there. Um, I'm talking about the scars of uh, it, situations. Um, things are gonna happen in business, um, things out of our control. Um, sometimes things are in our control, but the reality is it's not always pretty. It's a roller coaster. Um, the hamster wheel falls off the, the, the spindle sometimes and we got to pick it back up and keep going. Um, it's just, it's not always pretty. Um, so you have to just acknowledge that there's going to be mix ups. There's going to be mess ups in the world of real estate. You guys, I have so much appreciation for all of you because you are juggling like 9,000 plates just to get one deal to the transaction table. And I honor you for that. Me, I have nine sets of eyes that eventually look at your engraving to make sure it's never misengraved, but that's about all I have to deal with. So um, we do have lots of eyes that look at your engraving. I very rarely have misengraved an order. Number three, real quick, take risks and ownership. Take risks and ownership. Um, I'm gonna recommend a book to your peeps here, uh, Ben. Um, it is a military book. I came from a military family, so I just want to share this book. Anybody familiar by show of hands? Um, a book called Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink. Extreme Ownership. Okay, nice, Kelly. Nice. So um, that book changed the way I looked at how I ran my business. 
number one, it helped because I had a military background. So I understood like the perfectionism of it, but look past the perfectionism and just focus on the fact that you're going to drop a plate at some point and it's clearly your fault. Own it. Own it everything good, everything bad, and everything that's ever happened. I had a realtor one time, and I'm going to be real humble when I say this. I had a realtor. She ordered a very large order. And when I say very large order, I'll just tell you, it was almost 10 grand. She spent almost $10,000 on gifts on one order with me. We misengraved it. I had to pay for that. Not my assistant. It wasn't my assistant's fault. It was my fault. I missed it. We had to, we had to re-engrave that. Now, thankfully, I get a discount, but that's not the point. I called the customer and I said, I'm so sorry. I messed up. This was my fault. Let's fix it. She said, hey, no problem. Thank you for fixing it. When will my gifts be in? We get a reorder done very quickly. We ship it to another one of my clients in Florida accidentally. Can you imagine the horror that I felt, I was so embarrassed. And that was my assistant's fault, actually. She didn't copy and paste the correct email, but the reality is, is my assistant is an extension of me. I can never tell a client, oh, well, my assistant missed this. It's never her fault. She's an extension of me. I assume that risk. So take risk, but guys, take ownership. Read that book, Extreme Ownership um, by Jocko Willink. He's a Navy SEAL and it's phenomenal. Um, it's written in real layman's terms, it's great. Um, number four, hustle. Number four, hustle and have some fun. If you've ever seen me at a realtor event, you know I know how to hustle. So there was a time I did the ALC clinic and I was out of time. The break was over. I couldn't help anybody else. I had no one else there to help me. Um, and the reality is, is I had nine realtors leave their credit cards with me at the table. And I'm like, damn, these people trust me. Like these people really trust me. And I'm so grateful for that. Believe me, I have enough shoes and my husband has cut me off of Amazon. So your credit cards are safe. Um, the reality is you got to hustle. You got to get out there and hit the bricks every day. And if you're just doing as little as you can, and then looking at other people around you and in your office, and you're not getting the results you want, it's probably because you're not hustling quite enough. Um, you could hustle a little bit more. We could always look back and feel the pain of discipline, or we could feel the pain of regret. And I never, ever, ever want to feel the pain of regret. Oh, could I have done more as a daughter of a Marine? I like to lay my head down at night and go, I'm proud of what I've done. I'm proud of the job I did today. Everything may not have gone perfectly, but I'm proud of what I did. And then lastly, here's the last thing, Ben, we'll wrap up. It's just, uh, anybody, um, there was a guy, he, I watch a lot of TED Talks. Anybody watch TED Talks? Yeah, it doesn't matter what business you're in. You got to work on your self-development, your growth. You got to get yourself out there and learn from others. And Greg Bell, um, real tall, handsome guy. Um, don't tell my husband I said that because I'm clearly into guys of color. Um, <laughs> I'm honest. Uh, I just was never into the basic white guys from Alabama. My dad hates that, but I just never was. I married a Mexican. Great. Greg Bell is the founder of the Water Your Bamboo Leadership Academy. Go watch his TED Talk. Um, and he talks about watering your bamboo. Not, not dirty. This is very clean. <laughs> Water your bamboo. So these giant timber bamboo farmers, I can't remember where he said they're from. I think it's South America. So long story short, they'll water this bamboo for a whole year. They'll water it, these farmers. And this is their job. They'll, they'll water this bamboo and they'll water it for a year. And you know what they see? Nothing. Nothing. So they'll water it for a whole other year. They're like, okay, maybe the first time wasn't a charm. They'll water it for a whole other year. And you know what they'll see? nothing. So they'll water it for a whole third year, third time's a charm, right? Like they'll keep watering this bamboo, waiting for this giant timber bamboo to come up through the surface. And after three years, finally, do you know what they will see? Nothing. Y'all are a really sharp crowd. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it takes four years of watering the bamboo before they finally see it break through the surface. But when it does break through the surface, this giant timber bamboo, it will shoot up more, more than a meter or a yard in the first day. And it can grow as tall as 90 feet in the between four to five years. And so when I watched that talk, it really stuck with me. I, I was a nobody, I felt like. 
but I knew I had a skill set and I knew I had love for people and I knew I had good work, unrelentless work ethic. And I just saw Cutco and I saw it as an opportunity of I'm going to keep showing up. If I keep showing up every single day through the good, the bad, and the ugly, and I keep watering my bamboo, do you know what I will see? I'm going to see a business that is unparalleled to many others. I'm going to see a business that I can be proud of, something that I can lay my head down at night and go, and go wow, I created that with the help of others, but I, I created something out of nothing. And I will tell you guys very humbly, and this is a little bit of a shameless plug to my clients listening, I need you to buy more knives. And the reason I need you to buy more knives is because I have been the number two Cutco Closing Gifts sales rep in the country. This will be the fifth year in a row. Fifth year in a row, people. Nobody remembers number two. Roll Tide. Um, I'm just kidding. I'm appreciative of all your orders, but there's a girl. She's one of my best friends. We surround ourselves with people that we look up to and that mentor us, right? Her name's Deanna. She's been in the business over 20 years. She's one of my absolute best girlfriends. Um, just went to Puerto Rico with her on a girl's trip in July or June. And the girl beats me by about a hundred grand every year. You know, last year she sells a million. I sell 850. This year she's already over 600. I'm over five. So I'm just always on her curtails, but I feel like if it's ever going to happen, it's going to have to happen soon. So shameless plug. That's what I do. Um, I love what I do. I'm proud of what I'm doing. I, I'm really proud of what I've built. So that's it. That's all I got for you. Chelsea, that was plenty. I'm, I am so proud of you and, and the success that you, that you've built. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll help, uh, help you take it to the next level and pass it this year. Um, you or are your representatives, are you guys going to be in Austin next week or no? We're not going to be in Austin. We're working local events in our own markets. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If any of you have some pull with KW International or corporate and ask them to not, you know, do such a high percentage of profit share, we will be back. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. I'll, I'll have my buddy, Steve Markell and Kelly can uh, pull some strings because, um, uh, they've got influence because I don't, but <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Keisha Thompson, Keisha, use, uh, talk to Gary for us, will you please? Let's see what we can do. I, I Dude, don't. Gary loves the red butter spreader. We have red because of Gary, just yes. so you guys know. We yeah. came out with it years ago because of Gary, so. Wow. Well, Chels, um, so my slogan is that I bring the meat every week, and sweetheart, you've delivered that, and I am so honored that you touched us today. Sonia, right? I mean, she was she was spot on. I knew you would be. Um, I think last week I had uh, Denise Donahue, the uh, the mortgage nerd on, uh, because I, I I decided to uh, to pivot just a little bit from, uh, you know, the top real estate professionals from all over this world and uh, bring in sometimes related uh, partners. And that's you. And uh, I really appreciate you uh, pouring in, into us today. And I'm sure uh, the audience here, they got something from it, just like I did. Uh, so guys, if you need uh, not just a butter spreader, right? They do so much there. And, um, and I guess I've been a, a client of Chelsea's now for, I guess, the nine years that you've been here in the Dallas area. Matter of fact, I'm looking, uh, we have, uh, I guess I need to sell more clients because I've got some product that needs to be in their hand. So um, uh, we'll do our part. And if you'll do yours, uh, I, can, I can assure you, uh, the consumer will be proud uh, when they receive that product uh, that's branded by you. So you get the tax write off that we all need because everyone on here, they're all, you guys are all mega producers and um, uh, we need write offs. So uh, any last words, Chels, before we roll? Roll time, uh, right? Roll time. Yeah. So hey, you guys hey. are number one. And so Baylor, they've got us picked at number 10. So uh, it'll be interesting. And I cannot wait for football to kick off officially. So, dude, right. it, other than Leo season, it's my favorite season. So, because <laughs> I'm a Leo, my birthday's in August. So, Leo season. <laughs> I put my uh, email and my phone number over there in the chat box. So, if anybody has any questions um, that is a realtor, about how I help realtors customize their gifting and uh, potentially get you more referrals and make your clients happy and all of that. Just shoot me an email and we can schedule a phone call. Perfect. Guys, I appreciate you. Uh, now, next week, 
next week we will not be on because a few of us will be in Austin for uh, for mega camp. But when I tell you the following week after that, uh, I've got I'm bringing the meat. Let me just tell you that I'm bringing the meat in a couple of weeks. So make sure you chime in. And I appreciate you guys honoring me today. And Shels, thank you, sweetheart. I appreciate you. Can't wait to see you. And uh, guys, let's go. You know what? Let's go impact someone's life. Let's go change the trajectory of a family and uh, be a blessing to all. So we will see you guys soon. Take care.